Pyramid Car Audio. Today we have the SE909 Echo, which is stated to be an integrated 200 watt amplifier, 10 band graphic equalizer, Echo with 10 LED display. This is a new and improved model, Phase 3. And yes, that retail price, $219.95 back in 1983, is equivalent to $680 in 2023. Now those who know, know this was probably like $49 at the local flea market. They just had that high price on there, so you thought you were getting a deal. Yeah, 200 watts max power, 100 watts per channel at 4 ohms. It says 200 watts all over the outside of the box. Super slim. It has a high energy integrated amplifier. All that good stuff with a cool picture on the front. So let's get this out of the box and take a closer look and see what it's all about. Now it does come with a manual. This is a new improved version with high low impedance jack, a 10 band equalizer with 12 dB of boost or cut. Also it uses a BTL circuit type and a six amp fuse. And 60 watts RMS is what the box says. Also has a slide echo control and a full warranty and it's ready to install. Here on the left side, you can see a fader control from front to rear. This is a four channel amplifier, 10 band EQ. And yes, the V pattern is a must for the best sound quality. Also, we have the echo control and no, this is not a chainsaw. You big dummy. Also on the right, we have the booster bypass, which essentially turns on the amplifier or turns it off. Overall, the look and feel of this actually is pretty good quality as well as having an aluminum faceplate. It has those lighted up VU meters, which we know we love those. And of course on the back, you have a plethora of wiring. You have high level inputs from your speakers. Also, you have RCA inputs on the back. There's only two channels. This is a four channel amp, but um, you have to remember the high low switch is high impedance or low impedance, not high level or low level. I figured that out when it didn't work when I first tried it. Here's a wiring guide. You can stop this if you need to see this, if you have one of these and also a six amp fuse in line to power the amplifier. So once we know it's six amp, we kind of have an idea of how much power it puts out, but it's always fun to confirm that using the SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno, which will show us the power output in Watts on the left side. Also the ohm load and the voltage of the dyno. First up, we're going to try the amplifier at four ohms. We're testing two of the four channels. The other two are loaded with resistors rated 15 Watts by four RMS. Certified test first to 1% distortion. We get 10 Watts. So not quite the 15, but uh, we get 10. What about uncertified to clipping? Get a little bit more, 12 Watts right at 14 volts. And then we try the dynamic test, one kilohertz pulse track. You can watch those lights dancing a little bit. See it faded onto your screen right at about 10 watts, right at 14 volts. Now it was normal back in the mid eighties for head units to have about three or four watts of power. So this actually was a booster, did give you a little bit more. Now let's try two ohms. It's not rated at two ohms. And you can see here with the dyno, it didn't really like that run, especially certified up to 1% distortion. It kind of jumped around from four and five watts up to eight and 10. However, uncertified, we're almost able to get that 15. We get 13 and 14 at 13 and a half volts. What about dynamic? Can we get the 15 watts per channel? Eh, not quite. 12 and 13 at 13.74. This sound demo portion may be familiar for some of you who watched previous video that I showed these pyramid speakers and actually this same EQ booster, but I figured these segments were too cool not to show again. So let's check out the sound of this EQ booster.
Now you know we've got to take a look inside of this EQ booster to find out what makes it work. Let's take this top panel off and wow. oh my god, wow. <laughs> check this out. There is more wires in here than Goofy's home theater. Yeah, it's pretty crazy to see inside of this uh, EQ booster knowing that it actually still works. But there is so much wiring going on here. Each of the EQ sliders has wires coming off of it. All the different inputs and uh, speaker level outputs and all that stuff have their own wire. We see this NEC chip as well. That's an op amp chip. But uh, yeah, man, this thing is crazy overall. It does have a lot of capacitors, which probably need to be changed out since they're 40 years old. But this was new old stock. I got this from Sean from Mullen Performance Audio. Check the link in the video description over to his channel. I had lots of fun testing this and showing it to you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like to see this old audio equipment. Hopefully I can continue to share this with you. Testing and showing off this vintage audio equipment really is fun for me. And I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. So until the next one, this is Big D signing off saying, I'm out of here.